Hey everybody, Dave here coming back to you with yet another 1320 challenge video and I feel like today is a good day to start the 1320 challenge 101. This is going to be a video style series explaining all the things of 1320 challenge. Now I'm not going to do these in any particular order. I'm not going to do these as like, you know, noob to pro. I'm just going to do, okay, this subject is on my mind. This is that's how my brain works, okay? This subject is on my br my mind. We're going to make the subject of that video today. And then we will slowly push them out over time. So today's video, since there's a lot of new people to 1320 that seem to have forgotten what it is, we're going to be talking about H2BK. Now, what am I talking about here? H2BK, what is it? It's, it's head to bracket. Now, you might be thinking, okay, there's only two types of racing in the game. Uh, let's see. There's only two types of racing in the game. There's heads up and there's bracket. What is H2BK? There is no H2BK option. Head to bracket is exactly that. You take an H2H car and you create a dial in with bracket and then you send a bracket race. That's what allows two very different head to head cars to race legitimately against each other. So for example, lately I've been working on a Dodge Challenger setup video coming soon once I finally get the ratios down for it. But there's not a lot of people that run this car in the game, so I don't have many options of people to race. Now, I've been sending H2BK races to several people in the game lately, and a couple of them have actually been like, no, why are you not sending to my bracket car? It's a bracket race. It's not. It's an H2BK race. So let's say I wanted to race bad one. Uh, he has an F-Type, he has an H2H RSX. While I do have an H2H RSX and I do have an H2H, actually this looks like it's bracket since it's set to 10s, but I do have an F-Type, I want to run my, tra my Challenger. So what am I going to do? I'm going to figure out a dial-in for my head-to-head -head car and send a bracket race with it to the RSX. Now, you might also be wondering, like, hey, uh, how do I figure out a dial-in for my H2BK car? Well, you don't want to set your dial-in to what your best ET is, because my best ET on this car is 8.124, I want to say. But, like, that's really fast, at least for me. I don't average that. So what I like to do is I actually start a spreadsheet on Google Sheets, which this might be a little bit overkill. You can just do it with a calculator too. Do like five or 10 runs. Remember mean, median, and mode when it came to math in high school? You want to find the median time. And that's kind of how I do it. I take five or 10 races and I just save the data of the ET. And I try to figure out from there, what was my average ET? Whatever my average ET was, I plug that into a calculator, I plug in like 5, 10 races into a calculator, add them all together, and then that's my bracket dial-in, is whatever, you know, those 5 ETs plus each other divided by 5. So I'll set up a spreadsheet real quick, or my calculator to show you, and we'll go from there. So like I said, I did 5 races against the CPU, because that's a little bit safer than doing them online. RT doesn't really matter in this instance. But what I got, because I had a couple good runs, and maybe you want to do this with 10 races instead of 5 to get a really good dial-in time, I ended up getting 8.163 if you round up, as you can see, 8.163 out of 5 races. Now, if I keep this going and do 5 more, maybe that dial-in will change. So I'm going to do 5 more races and divide it by 10. So this is my last race, and then it'll be 10 races that I've done, and we'll get an even more accurate dial-in time here. So far, I've actually had some pretty good races with this thing, so this also doubles as some really good practice if you need it when playing this game. Because, you know, practice doesn't hurt. 8.161. I'm getting a lot better in this car. Granted, I'm still slow by all means, but this is an easy divided by 10. It's going to be... 8.166 divided by 10. Yeah. So my dial in should be around 8.166. Now, if you do follow this method and you're still learning the car, you might break out more often 
the whole purpose of figuring out your average ET in the car is just to like have a general guideline in your mind. You don't want to go into a race and not have any idea of what your dial in would be if you're going to run a race with a car. So you want to really figure out and hone in. Okay, maybe I'm starting to get better with the car. Let me subtract 0.05 and set my dial in to 8.159. I'm having a lot of outliers, which is why I also like using spreadsheets for this because then I can start to remove the old runs that are like 8.19s, 8.18s. I can remove that stuff because I'm getting better at the car and more consistent on lower ETs and then re-get my average ET for a dial-in from that spreadsheet. This is something that I'm actually starting to do with all my cars. That way I know what each thing runs and what it's going to run as an average because there's too many cars in this game. It's too hard to memorize what everything runs and keep it straight in my mind. So maybe even it's a cool feature idea for in the future of having some form of web portal where you can see your averages and like fastest ET, last 10 run ETs, uh, things of that nature. I don't know. There's a lot of fun ideas that can come from this, but I wanted to really explain how I figure out my H2BK dial-in times and what H2BK is. So just to reiterate, H2BK is bracket racing with your head-to-head -head cars. It's a way to make it fair for all involved that are racing head-to-head -head cars because an Evo heads up against a Camaro is not going to be fair. A Mopar drag car against the Dodge Challenger is not going to be fair. But if you run it as a bracket race and put a dial in time of your average ET, why not? You know, it's a fun idea. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. I hope you guys learned something and I'll see you in the next video.